Hey folks, I uh, should be live now. Am I live? Hello. I don't know if anyone can hear me. It does say end stream, but I'll wait for a chatter to um, speak up. How's it going folks? I see Franco, MT, and Adam are here. How's it going? <clears throat> you should stop buying these many projects in one kits. I mean, if you got the time for it. How's everyone? I am absolutely knackered. I have uh, purchased a used vehicle. I don't even have possession of it, and it's already giving me anxiety. Uh, let's see if I can do this without, uh, I can show you without doxing myself. You're a bit drunk. Oh, hi. Uh, just get an oh shiny moment. Okay. Hopefully I don't dox myself. This is it. That is a uh, V50 wagon. It is not in the best of shape. Hang on. It's not in the best of shape, but it's not in the worst of shape either. So that is it there. Uh, it's got some rust. Oh, hey, Johnny. Uh, so, so yeah, Volvo V50 wagon, it's much smaller than my V70, um, but it is manual transmission. Uh, it needs a whole bunch of stuff, but the price was right. Uh, paid $1,500 for it, 200,000 kilometers on the clock. Um, needs a windshield, might need a steering rack. Uh, surveys out on that one, definitely needs some steering rack boots. Um, needs four corner brakes. It needs, um, yeah, at least that much for safety. We'll see about more than that. So basically, anxiety. Up in the music room at 9 a.m. recording vocals to a song and drinking beer. Franco, do you release your music? I want to hear it. I would like to hear it if, uh, if it's, uh, available. Uh, oh, this mouse is still has battery in it. Okay. Do I have my second camera? Oh. Oh yeah, there. Look, I th there's the uh, V0 and that there is the Nevermore kit with a little fan inside. So it has a little fan. And this is the this is the kit that it all came in. So you got these like connectors and stuff, a bunch of hardware, and then these uh, carbon pouches. Not available. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just finished my my marathon working spree. This is, uh, yesterday was my first day off in uh, two weeks. So it was pretty nuts. Here, I'll, actually, I want to show you what I've been doing uh, with the hour or two before bed. Uh, well, you'll follow me because I have the mic. Also, my wife isn't home, so we don't have to worry about being quiet while she's recording something. She's out to work. Um, let's see. This guy and this guy. So I don't know if some of you might remember a while ago I said I had bought something to stream. I was gonna put it together on stream. Um, I ended up not because I was working like a madman. So there's this guy. This uh, is at least, oh, it's pretty long. It's 45 centimeters long, so this this end, it's not done. This one here, it's another section of it. 
this end here. It's not, it's not finished, but basically these two go together like so. They're going to snap together. And when it's done, it's going to be the entire Saturn V Lego kit. Um, something that's really cool is you can get these on AliExpress knockoff. So they're not the real Lego, but I was surprised they fit together really, really well. The only thing that I find to be very low quality about it is I don't know if you can see, might be too bright, but there are marks here. I don't know if you can see that. See those black marks there? So some of the plastic is not pure and different color batches get in. So, so you have these like un removable marks on them. Um, but these things, uh, the genuine and Chinese knockoff are made in the same. No, I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't think they're from the same factory. Um, but if they are, these are like factory seconds parts, but, but either way, um, the building experience, you're using original Lego plans cause they're the same thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peter, except these are like 77 bucks. So this has uh, 2,009 pieces and it was 77 Canadian dollars, whereas the original one is near $300 Canadian. So it's like a quarter of the price. And the, uh, the experience has been phenomenal. I've been taking my time like this represents probably about six, six hours. Whoop, knocked a part off. Um, I've been taking my time sorting through the pieces, putting it together, following the instructions. It has been awesome. And the uh, point of this is, well here, you guys are some of my number one fans, right? So I'm gonna let you guys know, they make a launch gantry. So the, this whole thing together is one meter long. So this is a, a meter long, uh, meter tall kit when you put it together. There is a launch gantry that you can get on AliExpress and that one's expensive because it has uh, almost 5,000 pieces. And the launch gantry is the whole launch base, the, the metal gantry that goes all the way to the top, all the walkways and everything. And my eventual goal is to buy that kit build it and then build a shadow box to put this on display. So like just a, a massive, you know, a meter and a half tall box with LEDs to put it on display. So that's, that, that's my eventual goal. I might, who knows, I might end up uh, selling this and getting the original kit if I ever do, uh, I do better in life, but this is a lot of fun. This is really good. So yeah, the pieces, they, they clip, you see the red clips in there? Well, they clip onto the gray pieces here. We don't have any engines on this uh, intermediate stage yet, but it is like already, this being 45 centimeters, no engines yet. Uh, this one here is already 23 centimeters long. It's really cool. Uh, Chinese Technic Lego tank kit that Lego don't make, and I think it's cool, yeah. Yeah, so let me put this back upstairs in my build area. Just the, the fine detail work was, it's just incredible. Like the design of this just made me appreciate the skill so much. I didn't like plastering, you know, all the American stuff. I felt a little weird, um, but it is an American shuttle uh, or uh, rocket. So I guess that makes sense. It just feels weird. You know, not being American, just being like, oh, United States everywhere. But yeah, this thing is phenomenal. I would recommend it. It's a, it's a bit of a challenging build. You have to really have your wits about you because you're doing things in um, uh, radial symmetry. And some of them are not symmetrical. Some of them have to be op opposite and some of them have three symmetrical, one asymmetrical part. It's a cool build. Really cool build. 
if I paint SpaceX on it, it depends. Uh, is Musk in charge? Because uh, it's probably going to explode if Musk is in charge. If Musk, Musk is too busy dealing with uh, Twitter, then it'll probably fly. Well, Trump's not going to space. I mean, there's, the U.S. government doesn't really have any space vehicles at the moment. They, they're uh, contracting out SpaceX. So he probably would if, if he funded a space program, but he doesn't want... You had, you had fun tro trolling Trump supporters? I mean, if you're the type of person who, who votes for Trump because you don't think that Biden is right, that's one thing. If you vote for Trump because you think he's a genius, I think you need to be evaluated, right? Like, if you're like, no, I prefer right-wing politics, I don't want poor people to have money, that's one thing. But if you're like, Trump is a literal genius, uh, that tells me all I need to know about you. That literally tells me all I need to know about you. Support, supporters of the dumb blonde. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the dumb blonde is such a, a fake trope because my wife is blonde and she's the smartest person I've ever encountered, ever. But uh, Trump, though, dumb as a bag of bricks. The thing is, he's not... He, he's, uh, he's dumb, but he's also very malicious. So, like, he's not intelligent per se but he has been in business a long time and he has learned a lot of things about business and how to like corrupt your way to the top you know what I mean at least bricks are usable <laughs> oh boy yeah enough enough politics I'm really I'm exhausted so that's why that's why I'm allowing it at the moment. But uh, yeah, if uh, I honestly feel really bad for a lot of uh, Americans because they're really has to have to choose between you know a douchebag and a turd sandwich, for lack of better terms. I mean, here in Canada, it's not much better. It looks like our uh, turd sandwich is going to win the next election. I think Canada is heading right as well. Uh, so that's not going to be great. But then again, our centrist is not great right now either. None of them are great. Canada is poop. So is the States. That's kind of the state of things at the moment. It is what it is, folks. So don't don't expect me, like I don't have um, a time limit of how long I want to go. I uh, I don't I don't have a plan. I just wanted to come hang out with you guys for a little bit. Oh, I got my um, my Voron's uh, serial number. Uh, when you're when you're done, your Voron, you can apply for a serial number. And here's mine. So my V zero is V zero dot three five two five. What's wrong with my coffee mug? That's that's just coffee. Look, comes right off. How's it going, Marcus? Uh, am I going to try to get the solar? Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. I heard. 
You got it on the podcast. Got what? Not sure. Um, Marcus is here. Marcus, so I just bought a used car, by the way. It's a... Uh, it's gonna. It's a piece of poo, and it needs a lot of work before it'll pass a safety check. But uh, trying not to dox myself here. But that. That is it. That is a. 2005 Volvo V50 manual transmission. Uh, no automatic transmission to deal with. I hope so, Marcus. This summer, uh, that's what I'm hoping. I hope it has AC. I didn't check if the AC worked. But at the price of it, I couldn't say no. So they were asking $2,500. And I offered $1,500. And I got it. Uh, so I was pretty happy about that. Oh, oh, I might need to, hold on, I might need to stop the... Uh, I was, you know what, I was not planning on getting another Volvo. God damn it, my mouse just died. I was not planning on getting another Volvo, but uh, I love those cars, and this time has a manual transmission. And uh, the cool part about this Volvo is nobody knows what kind of transmission is in it, because the... Um, Hang on, let me fix the camera first. I need to focus on one thing at a time. So no one knows what kind of transmission is in it. Uh, uh, properties, configure video, focus, no autofocus. Uh, has been keeping his couple decades old Volvo going for, min for years and years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, okay, so my Volvo, my V70, my original one, there's nothing wrong with it aside from the transmission, and there are no transmissions available unless you want to pay the price of a used car for a transmission. A remanufactured uh, transmission for that Volvo, for that V70, is uh, $3,600 plus shipping American. So just doing the quick math on that, um, $3,600, $600, let's say another 400 bucks of freight shipping, so let's go four grand. So $4,000 times 1.35, that's $5,400 plus I'll have to pay taxes on that when it comes into the country. So $5,400 for the one part needed to fix my V70. Or I can fix it myself. I have the parts here, but that's going to be super a, a long process. This, this V50, all said and done with a full year's insurance on it, is going to cost me under four grand. So I paid $1,500 for this new V70. Um, I'm going to have to pay taxes on that, so whatever, 13, whatever 13% 13 of $1,500 is. Then I have a appointment for a windshield next week, needs a new windshield, or else it won't pass a safety check. It's got a big puck mark in the windshield. Um, so that's 500 bucks. So we're up to two grand plus whatever the taxes were on the car. Um, it needs about $1,000 in parts, so that's three grand. And the safety check itself is 200 bucks, so $3,200. Uh, you know, adding miscellaneous here and there, it's going to be like under four grand. So for less than the price of a transmission, which I still have to install myself, because that, that, the transmission cost is no installation, just the parts. The whole car is costing me less. What did you spend $2,400 on? On your Sereno. I, I did read in the little, you, you have those blurbs, right? The email blasts. I did read that you did something like that. I wish you would have contacted me. Yeah, $500, that's Canadian. 
So uh, if you think about it, it's about 380 American. That's installed as well, not, not, the, not the part. They come to your house and they install it. Um, uh, windshield used to be about, okay, four new tires, can't help you with that. New struts, sway bar linkage, ball joints, and alignment. Okay, yeah, that's a big job. But see, Marcus, here, let me, let me break that down for you. So four new tires, uh, I buy them direct from, from uh, suppliers. So they cost me about 90 bucks each. So you think about 400 and, 460 or so, uh, 360 for four tires. Uh, four new struts. Uh, that if they're quick struts, they're probably going to be like 200 bucks, 150 bucks a corner, something like that. Let's go 200 bucks. That's $800. Sway bar linkages are like 20 bucks. They're cheap. And ball joints are like 20 bucks. And alignment's about 100 bucks. So alignment is all labor. So you're not far off what I would pay. Not too far off. Tires are just expensive. It's just that that is what it is. PCB Way offered you a sponsorship, but I have the decision pillar says the project I want to propose. I don't know what projects to build on it. Uh, let me see if I can do this without doxing myself, uh, Marcus, but I'll show you where I get mine. Hopefully it doesn't be like, hey, you should, uh, you know, what's your address? Let me just pull up the website. Uh... I think it's okay. I have a pair of reasonably good AW that, like Mastercraft AWs, because that, that's kind of shit if they are. Sorry. All right. So hopefully it doesn't dox me. Uh, but this is the website I use. It's a French website, so you might need Google Translate. Okay, GT radials. Uh, so this is it, P-N-E-U-S-A-R-A-B-A-I-S. -A -A they just ship directly to your door, so that's 235-65-17, 235-65-R-17, and then you want summer, t summer tires, and then you go search. Good thing I speak French. And then you bought some Goodyear Assurance. See, what I would do, oh shit, they're more expensive than I thought. Uh, 134 a pop, even for cheapies. What kind of car do you have? Sorrento? Hold on, hold on. 2011 Sorrento. Why are they so expensive? 20. Sorrento. Oh, it's an SUV. Okay. Still, that's really expensive. Uh, all right. Anyways, Goodyear Assurance. Kumho, Kumho. Goodyear Assurance. So that's uh, 70104 with free shipping. That's expensive. That's actually, sorry, I, I thought Sorrento was just the uh, mid sized sedan. 235-65R17. But yeah, they're 10% uh, off though right now. And available. Uh, has a hazard guarantee, r low rolling resistance, uh, quiet and reasonable resistance to wear. So I don't know how much you paid, but you probably paid about uh, between and a hundred dollars to get them installed something like that yeah no no it's it's fine Marcus I'm just uh, I'm an educator so I like educating people on where they can get it like the thing is like if you just go up to the cheapest name brand so here these Champiro tourings are perfectly fine 
160 bucks. Uh, Kumo Solus, that's fine too. Although I go all the way to these cheapies sometimes. Like even 119, that looks pretty, pretty shit to be honest, but <laughs> if you don't want to keep the car, that's, that's cheap, 500 bucks. Uh, oh yeah, and they do free whatever roadside stuff. But yeah, they, they ship for free to your address, which is really nice. Passenger side front strut trying to find his way to the engine compartment. The cap that the shock is attached to had rusted through. Really? The uh, top hat, not commonly... They're, they're not common to uh, rust like that. Uh, usually it's the actual body that rusts. Uh, Hyundai. Hyundai. What, what year is your Sorento? Cheap tire for my car are 180 pounds each. Wow. I'm going to guess your Sorento. I think you said already. 2011. 2011. 2011 Sorento. Uh-oh. Oh, it's Kia. Sorry, Kia and Hyundai are the same. Kia. I don't, I don't know how to... There we go. 2011 Sorento. Oh, we're going to go. Okay, big boy. Suspension. This is where I, I've been shopping for my parts for my V50 as well. Shock strut coil assembly. We want... Front left, so they're about 80, 80 to a hundred dollars a pop without the sport package. So anywhere you know around, the noise is making end of the world horrendous. So yeah, even this, these economy ones are not any cheaper. So they're about a hundred bucks a pop. With the sport package, it costs a little bit more. 136.10. Uh, plus shipping, mind you. Don't forget, that's plus shipping. This is, uh, they ship from the States through um, Pure Later and FedEx. And then ball joints over here. See, ball joints are inexpensive. Oh, they have to be pressed though. Boo! <laughs> to be pressed out of the, uh, either out of the knuckles or out of the arms. You might have done whole control arms. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you probably did full control arms because they're a lot easier to replace. To replace the struts seems like a thing with this model year of Sorento. Interesting. But there's the ball joint in the control arm. So the, the issue is, it's one bolt there and one bolt here, but these bolts, they often seize. So when I do them, I lube the ever-loving crap out of the insides here. So the ball joints, uh, they've, they sold you uh, sway bar links because they attach to the strut for sure. And it's very hard to get them apart without destroying them. So two of these, see? Seven dollars. I'm gonna have to do this exact same thing to my uh, my Volvo. Probably, I haven't checked um, what it needs yet. I don't have it with me. I just took a look, but I'm gonna have to do the same thing. So like, uh, gonna have to buy some oil filters. Gonna have to buy a timing belt, water pump these kinds of things. So I want a good quality kit. So here's the ASIN kit. So 200 bucks. So you know, it's all stuff that I'll have to... Broken struts are affecting alignment to a certain extent, which is why my front tires are almost bald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your wheel was uh, oscillating up and down, for sure. This is my, this is my specialty. Did you do your, your time belt water pump? Uh, Marcus, not not to uh, 
not to scare you. <laughs> Kia. Uh, I do this with my students, by the way. This is something we do. We go uh, and price things out so they learn how to how to do it. Uh, uh, engine. Let's see if it's a chain. No, oh, it's a chain. Never mind. No, you don't. You don't need to do it. it it's a chain. It's lifetime. No worries. So this this is what happens. You'll have to replace this if you don't keep up your oil level. If you're uh, if you don't check your your oil level, what happens is the the chain wears in between the links, and it, it stretches. Yeah, yeah. If it breaks if it breaks on you, it'll be an en that's it. Your engine is done. Uh, however. If you hear a rattle on Excel, like a grr, like a like a, a box of marbles, like a, a a container full of marbles, just give it a quick like shake. Uh, that means your tensioner, which is uh, actually there's dual tensioners, so this guy here and this guy here, they're losing oil pressure, and it's it's allowing the chain to slap onto the guides onto this this portion here. Uh, that's when you know you need. To have it looked at before it uh, skips teeth. You've got the V6 in there or the four cylinder. I'll, I'll check the four cylinder, see if it has a belt. Engine. No, chain as well. Yeah, so yeah, it's a chain. So yeah, you're good. Lifetime. My Volvo, however, Timing belt. You're gonna have to do that. It is, it is part of the deal. That's the deal, my dear. Pontiac Sunbird back in the day blew up its engine for no apparent reason. Yeah, they do that. My, uh, my dad's uh, Ford Ranger just seized the block, just at idle at a red light. The block just seized completely. I had a power bar on the crank pulley, and I couldn't break it. Yeah, the labor sucks. Yeah, that's why I like doing stuff myself. The um, the Honda V6s, I used to get paid six hours labor to do the timing belts uh, back at the dealership. And at the end of my tenure there, I could do them in about 90 minutes, which was pretty good. Used engine on the Sunburn, $2,200 installed back at the time. You know what? They're probably around the same at the moment. That's about what engines are. They're about uh, 1000 to 1500 bucks and about 10 hours labor. So it's like three grand, something like that. But you get a used one of unknown quality and quantity. I feel like I lost a lot of you folks uh, just ranting about cars here. Sorry. Also, my optical mouse is not opticaling something wrong. Maybe I unplugged it? Did I unplug it? No, it's plugged. I'll plug it in a different slot. Oh, is it mousing now? It's mousing now. All right. Uh, I mean, some of you are here. Some of you have, have been lost to the vagaries of time. How many? Six concurrent viewers. Holy crap, I need to go on break more often. No, the battery's good. See? Lights, the light's lighting. Um, oh, I haven't put my PCB Way video live, have I? This guy here. I don't know if you've guys seen the finished product. Ugh, it's an early access at least. So that's my dumb load. I got a bunch of these. Uh, let's see. I've got a power supply that's already running. Not yet. Yeah. Ah. Oh, so that's at one amp. Not doing much of anything. Let's 
go five amps, enter. Is that five amps? Ah, oh, they're starting to glow. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Resistance is increasing as the, uh, as the element heats up. So they are glowing a little bit. See that? Seven, enter. There's at seven amps. So four volts across them now. These are all in parallel. I can confirm glow. You may have a simple electronics pro Yeah. Um, I will tell you, Marcus, I can promise you it won't be in April because uh, I have still not done my taxes. <laughs> so not in April. I need to get the car safety checked. I need to um, do my taxes. I need to take the part uh, the, the tarp off the pool before it starts turning into a swamp. I have to uh, cut down a tree that is about to fall onto my shed. Uh, so it won't be in April. I'm hoping for May, June. Uh, let's go 10 amps. There we go. There's uh, It's still not full jam at 10 amps. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but yes, I, I am more than willing to help. And also at some point, there's what we discussed, Marcus, via email. I haven't had any updates on that, but no updates means that the plan hasn't changed, if you know what I mean. So it's, yeah. I can't, I can't say too much because no one else is involved. It's just us at the moment. There we go. Full force. This is at uh, 12 amps. So, so either way, once that, or w once that happens, I have to talk a little cryptically. But those of you who kind of are in the know, you, you know what's going on. Um, but once that happens, Marcus, I'll have to, I'll be contractually obligated to head down to the, to the observatory either way. And if I don't read all the emails in the blast, but if I read, read some of the emails properly, you guys will be ready for it, right? You guys will be in a position to do what we discussed, correct? I think so. This is uh, 141 watts and it smells like burning. Let's turn that off. Should be, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm actually pretty excited for you to show me <laughs> what it's all about as well. Yeah, it's, it is illuminating. My uh, poor wires have gone. Oh, you know what we can do? OK. Uh, I have dis built, sorry, squirreled. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a little bit of uh, ADHD, but anyways. Because that brand new power supply, uh, I need a lot of these banana jacks. So I ordered some thicker wire so I can make some big, thick wire to go, you know, from up up there to down here so I can supply things. So we can make some of those because I don't really need to make a video on making uh, banana leads. And now my whole workshop smells like burning. Oh, and another thing I wanted to do. Uh, did I spill the beans? No, okay, Franco, I think I was asking during the unboxing, I was asking uh, if they could use something, and then, and then we didn't hear anything on, you know, I said I would pitch something to Unity, but we didn't hear anything, no updates, so it, it's possible that that didn't happen and it's something else, right? So, yeah. Uh, let me go get my thermal camera because, I don't know if you can tell, but I have an infection here, and apparently you can use a thermal camera to detect that, so one moment, please. Actually, you guys are going to follow me up there anyways with the mic. Here I go. I've been having lots of fun. Um, as I said on the... Uh, on the podcast, my wife has been sick. She's feeling much better now, but 
I was using the thermal camera to see if she had a uh, fever. Make sure the door's locked. Which is pretty neat. Also, I always tease her on how she's always cold. Well, I could prove it scientifically. Oh, it's fine, Franco. Yeah, but you're... Let me say, Franco, you're, bark you're barking up the correct tree. But it's a secret. All right. Did I, get, did I ever tell you how much I like Unity? Yep, that's the hot spot on that finger. So my middle finger is 34.6 and it's 35, 34, 9, 35. So it's like a couple fractions of a degree warmer. And look, you take your hand away, and there's a thermal signature of my hand. My coffee mug might be a little warmer still. Yeah, you can see a gradient. You can also see the reflection in the spoon. So, yeah, and then this thing will get, well, it's probably warm because it was on, and this one is cooler. See? See the warmth in those banana jacks compared to this one. Oh yeah, I don't know how long I'll be here. Parts of the body being cold while having excellent blood flow is a sign of vitamin B deficiency. Uh, my wife has, I think, low blood pressure. So she's always cold because her extremities don't have good uh, blood flow. And obviously, the part I love the most about this battery is you just plug it into USB-C and charge it. This is incredible. I don't know if it charges if you plug USB-C in here. But either way, I love this. I kind of want to get more batteries. Uh, UT-M17. Should we check how much these batteries cost? UT-M17. Oh, boy. Uh, screen. Uh, AliExpress. Yeah, 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 yeah. UT-M17. Ugh! Maybe I won't be buying another one. <laughs> I used to have low normal BP. Turned 50, now I take BP meds to keep it down. I think my wife would like that. Every time she gets up off the couch or whatever, she gets lightheaded because of her low blood pressure. Um, yeah, they're a little expensive. Let's, uh, let's, let's not. I, I bought the macro lens for it, though. I don't know where it went, but it's in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, we'll make some, we're going to make some cables because I bought some of this stuff. probably cool enough to put these covers back on. If not, they're going to be stuck to it. No, we're good. I genuinely, though, I know it's a, it's a, it's a health problem for you, but genuinely, I think my wife would be thrilled to have high blood pressure. Because you know what? What's crazy? There's nothing they can do to increase blood pressure. Like, all of the advice is how to lower blood pressure. When you have uh, low blood pressure, there's really nothing you can do. And so my wife's like, what, do I, do I just take, on smoke, take up smoking now because I, I don't have any freaking blood pressure? So this is some 12 gauge. Um, I've decided to use 12 gauge. Yeah. It gave you positional hypotension. 
hypo, that's low, right? Hyper is high, hypo is low. Um, and I don't remember how long a wire I used. It was 60. Probably about there. More than 60 centimeters. Like 80 centimeters. Stand up, nearly fall over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same thing as, as my wife. I mean, I like it because when she gets up, she, she uh, clings on to me. So, uh, so that she doesn't uh, hurt herself, but, you know, so I get, uh, I get free hugs whether she wants to or not, but, uh, yeah, that's just my, that's just my privilege. How long do I want again? You guys need to help me out here. My brain is fried. I've been too, so busy. I worked, uh, I worked. So the college contracts uh, are now done, but there's a cling on, on the starboard bow. I have no idea what's going on. Anyways, um, I worked two college contracts last week, plus I worked um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then the week before that, I worked Monday, Wednesday, uh, uh, Tuesday, Thursday at the, no, anyways, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying. This is my first, yesterday was my first day off. Yesterday, Friday? Yeah, yesterday was my first day off in like two weeks. So I'm losing my mind here a little bit. All right, uh, let's say whatever length this is. This is this is the length we're making them. I want them to be long enough that they come down from the top here, from like up on top, because all the gear is going to be up top there. Okay, give me a little bit more length. There we go. So, yeah, plenty of length. What does Canadian have to do with it? Guys, you're not being very nice, you know? That's okay. You don't have to be nice here. I don't want to imagine how much I'm spending on making these test cables out of a uh, 12 gauge silicone. Oh, no, no. That, there's no, that you're not offending me. So 12 gauge silicone wire. Uh, this is costing me a lot. However, I am I am at an age, and I've uh, I have been uh, on YouTube for long enough that I'm looking at stuff that I built in 2016, and I'm still using them eight years later. So when I'm building my test leads, I have to remind myself that I'll probably be using these for the next 15, 20 years. So I need to stop being so cheap. Ah, oh, clings on to, oh, jeez, Christ, guys. <laughs> I like it. It's just I'm not, I, I'm not fast, guys. You, you have to, you have to give me, you have to give me a pass. I bought, uh, so the reason I didn't, build the Lego with you guys on stream is that I bought a set for my wife to build as well because she is she has her own YouTube channel yeah brain equals fried uh, so she has her own YouTube channel so I bought her an ATAT uh, Star Wars Walker thing and we spent some quality time building Lego together. We were both at the dining room table. And instead of playing video games with each other, which is usually what we do on our dates, we had Lego dates. And I'll tell you, I freaking loved it. I loved it to the point that 
I'm going to buy two more sets and we're going to build we're going to build together again. Um, I am incredibly busy at this time of year, so I'll have to sort of preemptively get a set for another time of the year. But it was awesome. Uh, it is cute. Thank you. Candlelit Lego dates? No. Able to continue filling the electronic series started back in December. So this is also, some of you know already, that the college, my college contracts got canceled for the summer because the provincial government decided that um, education is not really important. Uh, so they cut funding. So I should have more time this summer, but whenever I say I have more time, I end up with less time. So take that as you may. And no, not candlelit, because we're old. We need light to see the, the pages. And when I say we, I really should just say me, because I'm, I'm the one who has issues seeing in the dark. There we go. That should be good. But yeah, it was great just, uh, just building, building Lego together. It was fun. Uh, it pouring yeah oh, I mean I'm 36 36 uh, how, how does that work yeah 36 so I'm not super young plus I've been really rough to my body because I've been working on cars my entire life melt the Lego or burn the instructions yeah oh that's the thing too a lot of these Chinese um, sets, they come with PDF instructions. Is your birthday today? Happy birthday, Franco. 56 is not actually that old these days, you know. So a lot of these Lego sets come with PDF instructions. I just happened to accidentally order two sets with uh, paper instructions. So it's been nice. I think I will purposely get paper instructions. The, uh, the cheap ones, Adam, the, the AliExpress ones. Because if you read a lot of them, the descriptions say uh, PDF instructions by email. So I'm going to purposely, I'll pay a couple bucks more and I'll get the printed ones. So Franco, why are you wasting your birthday in this live stream? It's getting freaking hot now. Um, hang on, I have to mute the mic because or else you guys are going to go deaf. Give me a second. There we go. Took my uh, took my sweater off, so now you can see my naked arms. Um, you have no real life. Yeah, but you got friends, right? Go and do things. I'm gonna throw out these little ends pieces of uh, silicone before they get stuck in my socks. So, uh, Adam, then you're a connoisseur of uh, cheap Chinese Lego sets. What are these friends things? Yeah, I know. We electronics enthusiasts are often recluse, recluses. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got bunch of these stripped. Strip some more. I have like a wall full of strippers up here. And yet I do <laughs> I do it the, uh, the old school way. CCLP kits. What's CCLP mean? Ah. Uh, 
came with me to the observatory Monday for the eclipse. No Lego involved. Um, that would have been fun. I was working. I, I had um, I told my boss that uh, we should stop at uh, 3 p.m. and take a look at the eclipse, and he agreed. So that was the day I did. Uh, that was on Monday. I did overtime. Cheap Chinese Lego product kits. Ah, gotcha. I have a friend and his girlfriend. I stay with once or twice a year. Okay. So, uh, obviously, Marcus, you, you weren't inside the dome for the eclipse, right? You were uh, outside eclipsing. All right, let's see. Where are the parts? Because I did buy the connectors. Yeah, here they are. Tons of people complain about sore eyes. They are, sadly, some of them are misinformed, but a lot of them are just anti-science. And so uh, they kind of, they kind of get what they deserve, you know? But if you look at the Google Trends data for eyes hurt, it follows the path of totality. Ugh. Tell me again, why didn't I just yeah. why didn't I just buy these pre-made? Oh yeah, because I wanted the, the length. And then a whole bunch of people are trying to tell me that my welding mask wasn't good enough. And I'm like, no, no, actually NASA says a uh, shade 12 is the minimum. A shade 14 is the recommended, and my shade was set to 13, so right in the middle. And also, I'm not going to be staring at it because I have to work. So, yeah, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted a higher gauge wire. That's very true. I do want a higher gauge. I did, I stripped way too much wire though. Yeah, I wanted custom length and I did want a higher gauge. Oh, I better put the sheath on first, huh? You guys will have to be the uh, arbiters of whether or not I've put the sheath on yet. Oh my god, the gauge might be a little too... Uh, A bit too thick to fit. 10 gauge supply the motors of the digital which turns out to be considerable overkill. Really? Uh, yes, Adam. It does. It has a chance to. You, you'll probably heat some pixels. I pointed my uh, cell phone camera to the Eclipse and it was okay. But it definitely has a shot, a chance to. Okay, so this is problematic. Um, can I slip it on after? Can this go all the way through? Oh, not easily. Okay, I'll do one. I'll do one first because I can always slip it from the other side. So we're going we're gonna to do this one as a test run. I also have silicone lube that I can try. Yeah, I definitely stripped way too long. Solar glass and material over the end of your binoculars worked fine. Do that at the eyepiece end and you have broken, broken optics. Yeah, for sure. Actually, um, you'll, you'll also melt your... Um, your uh, your eclipse glasses. 
because you'll focus all that light into a tiny point at the eyepiece side and you'll melt your eclipse glasses. Uh, Matthias Wandel, who is a uh, woodworking YouTuber who used to live in the west end of Ottawa and now lives in the Maritimes somewhere. I, uh, I had a chat with him because I, I recognized where he lived approximately, like the neighborhood. And I was like, hey, you're, you're, you're uh, an Ottawan as well. And then uh, we chatted a little bit. Cool guy. Just a little bit, though. He's not, like, we're not friends, I wish. Uh, recently bought a wire and ferrule kit. Really nice crimper for it. Made such a difference in wiring terminal blocks. Yes. I have that. Bootlace ferrules. And there's the, uh, I, I bought the square crimper, but you can also get hexagonal ones and octagonal ones, octagonal ones. So, yes, sir. Ferrules make all the big difference. It makes you look so pro. Bootlace ferrules. Um, these will be soldered, though, because, uh, again, I want uh, low-resistance connections. DuPont kit with the correct kit, and I hate using it. Oh. Open the back of a film camera. Place a piece of thin-ish white paper. Open the shutter, and you can see the eclipse onto the paper. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd be careful on how much you're focusing it, though. You're going to burn your paper. <laughs> I think next time, though, I'm going to try to do some YouTubing. Uh, and the simple reason, OK, we're going we're to test this one. I'm, I, I was going to do all of them, but we're going to see if this one works. Uh, next time, I'm going to prepare way in advance and get those nice, those good views, you know? Um, now, how am I holding this? How am I doing my work holding here? Oh yeah, I had a wood. I had a piece of wood. Where did that go? Where would it be? See what I did there? And my piece of wood is, I, I remember, is falling apart. Uh, huh. Where did I put it? Where would it have gone? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to show you guys my wood, so look away if you're uh, prudish. Well, I mean, if I find my wood. Um, oh, yeah, I also, I made an adult purchase the other day, too. I bought a 2D printer, my laser printer that I bought used 15 years ago, kicked the bucket. I think the capacitors and the power supplies, the power supply screwed. Um, Keep that for OnlyFans. Uh, my, if I made an OnlyFans, it would it would just be fans, and because that uh, joke is so stale now, I wouldn't do it. So there you have it. Okay, let's go in the other room. Maybe I put it back in the other room. Um, no. Okay. Well. Extreme measures. My God, this place is a mess. Ugh, I have so much to do. Why am I streaming again? I just want to hang out with you guys. There's that, but is it a good idea? I don't know. What can I say? All right. Well, I don't know why. Anyways, here's my wood. Uh, and now I'm going to drill a four millimeter hole into my wood. 
Oh, is my drill all the way upstairs? Oh, come on. Why you do this to me? Is this four millimeters? Whatever, close enough. Let me go get my drill. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you see, it's not, it's not really long, but it, it, but, but it's big this way. It's like, it's like the cheese wheel, you know? It won't hit bottom, but it will stretch the sides. All right, with that bad joke, I am uh, gonna get my drill. You guys know the drill. So my drill is in the bathroom because I got tired of scrubbing grout. So I bought a uh, scrub brush, like a, uh, a drill brush. And I used my drill to clean the uh, tiles in the shower. Works really well. And back. Now I'm gonna be all winded. And you guys are gonna make fun of me. All right. Uh, back in the 90s, about a guy who had cystic fibrosis who was hanging into hanging and literally drilling holes into. It. Oh, interesting. Those drill brushes are a US thing. Really? I'm honestly converted. Uh, I'm gonna be using a drill brush all the time now. Okay, there we go. And this here. I don't know how much heat transfer I'm gonna get. This is probably where those little uh, butane torches would be way better for soldering this together, but that's not what we have, so that's not what we're using. I need more light, I'm casting a shadow. But what's nice is this is silicone wire, so I don't have to worry about um, melting back the insulation. That's hot enough. Yeah, it is pouring down there. I just can't see because it's too far. I'm trying not to get myself full of hot solder. Nope. That's good. Make sure we've got enough in there. And then up that goes. It sits over the edge of the bench. And then if we can manage to get the heat shrink or the, uh, the end up over with the help of a little lubricant, then we're good to go for the other ones. I just realized I did not check if this wire is copper. I mean, it's heavy, it should be copper, but then again, silicone is heavy too. Some banana plugs are notched. Oh yeah, I've seen those. But then I saw the price on these and that's why I ended up with these. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to straighten this out. It doesn't, well, won't be straight, straight. Oh well, that's okay. Nobody, nobody minds a little curve to the left. All right, let me go see. I'll get some silicone spray and some paper towel, and we'll see if we can slip the end up. And if we can, then that's the way we're doing all of our 
things. This is the uh, automotive guy in me. This silicone spray is super slippery. So we're just gonna give that a little, little toot. And then try to shove it in bass backwards. Ooh, that's still hot. Oh, come on. Get in there. Seems like that screw is getting in the way. Oh, come on. Maybe if I spray directly in there. Yeah, I would say my biggest advice to people who don't know cars is to throw away your WD-40. It's not a lubricant. It is horrible. It's so horrible that WD-40 actually makes lubricants now. They're WD-40 brand, they're just not WD-40. This might be more trouble than it's worth. I'm trying to get that, that screw in on the short side. Uh, I mean, I could. It's probably soldered in there now. It is soldered in there now. WD-40 make a range user. Yeah, so because WD-40 is such crap, like the actual original WD-40 stuff, um, I, don't, I don't reward them by buying any of their other products. Oh. It is going. See if we can just pry underneath there. So yeah, I think if it wasn't for the screw, everything would work perfectly. So for the next one, we're not gonna use the screw. I will also tell you that penetrating fluid is a scam. No, don't use WD-40 for rusty screws. It's, do it's doing nothing, I promise. Spray lithium grease for the observatory. Tub of blue, extreme pressure grease. Why, well, a guy could have a good weekend in Vegas. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually, this stuff is the new stuff here. This is the uh, machine, machine lube, this stuff. Super lube with uh, PTFE. Look at that. New tub of machine lube. I, I disagree uh, with you, Franco. I think, uh, I think that, uh, so what penetrating fluid does is it gives you the courage to pull a little harder on the wrench. It does, it absolutely does not penetrate into the metal. It doesn't do anything. And WD-40 doesn't even penetrate. It's not even a penetrating oil. So it does even less than that. Okay, 
see, we just need to slip this over. Oh, we got it. it. Went too far, but we got it. There we go. So that is my non-crooked a uh, little bit of wax dissolved into kerosene. I mean, that's possible. But even that, uh, there's an old, old mechanics trick about melting candle wax on bolts, and that does nothing also. Uh, literally, the wax does not creep. Do you know how much pressure there is on the threads of a bolt that is torqued to specification? There's no way, like, it does not, it, it will not go anywhere. So that's regular pressure. And then if you add rust to it, rust is like Loctite. Like it, it'll fill the holes. No. This is also stuck in there permanently. All right. So let's uh, spray inside here. No, don't use anti-seize, Marcus. Don't use anti-seize. Please do not. Anti-seize is another one of those old things. It's like aluminum powder in uh, suspension. What you want to use is a nice coating oil, like uh, uh, fluid film. Works really well. It's my current favorite. Yeah, do not use anti-seize, I promise you. Especially don't use it on, on uh, brake components. That's what um, lots of people, or, and especially wheel studs. Yeah, do not use anti-seize. You need a, a, like, a, like an oily film. Yeah, f fluid film is, is ac the real deal. That stuff is the real deal. I, I promise you that. But anti-seize, no. Anti-seize is like there's metal particles in, in an oily suspension. Like it does, it does nothing. In fact, um, I believe, I have to choose my words carefully here because I am on YouTube. The pew-pew uh, manufacturers, you know, the ones that go pew-pew, pew-pew. Um, they use anti-seize on the slides as a grit to um, uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, lap the two parts together, and you're supposed to clean it off after uh, so many uses. Uh, 1950s to 70s reel to reels, yeah. But but trust me, you 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 can't do anything with WD40 that you wouldn't be able to do with a real lubricant. WD-40 is... The WD stands for water dispersant. That's, that's kind of what it is. It's a, it's a great uh, solvent to clean things in, but not to lubricate. Oh. It's not a lubricant even though they advertise it as such. Oh. Uh, oh, that works well, yeah. As coolant and machining, yep. But it, the problem is it flashes off, so you can't... Um, you can't use it in a recirculating system because the uh, whatever whatever is in it, like WD forty dries. It it all evaporates. It doesn't leave anything behind. So it's uh, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a good lubricant, but as a coolant for metalworking, yeah, absolutely.
that is one of my biggest pet peeves is uh, is uh, WD-40 in the industry. But yeah, fluid film is actually the bee's knee. The bee's knees. Uh, you'll see uh, Eric at South Main Auto advocate for it all the time. And he lives in an area that's more rust prone than our area, which is incredible to think about. He's ba basically similar climate to where I live, uh, except he's in the country. So there's, not, there's a lot more humidity. And they seem to have a private contractor for the roads that is paid by uh, per gram of salt. <laughs> so they get a lot of salt on their roads. Fluid film has very low freezing point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't drip that much either. It it's pretty good, pretty good consistency. I've I've honestly I've worked at a dealership for nearly my entire career. And I was always skeptical of these miracle everything's. But uh, fluid film actually is the bee's knees. It is very expensive, but I'll tell you, it, it works. It really does work. Now I'm mangling the crap out of this one. Um, do you get how do you get the lanolin? Do you have to squeeze the wool? Is it a liquid produced by the wool? Do you have to squeeze the sheep and then it'll pee it out? Because I know uh, lanolin itself, sewing machine oils for, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Sewing machine oil is not synthetic, though as far as I know. Glands on the skin when you wash the wool lanolin. Okay. I did not know. Oh, come on. So we're almost at the point here. We just need to slide this in, but it's a little crooked because of the soldering. It just needs to go up and over. So lanolin is apparently really good for your skin, too. Uh, you're supposed to use some sort of lanolin bul uh, balm when you get a tattoo. I know that part. By the way, this stuff is not great uh, silicone. It, it, see, there's like nothing left. Heptane, yeah, I don't know. So it does smell terrible. Fluid film does smell terrible. There we go, lanolin and beeswax. Guys, why am I so freaking hot? Is, is it hot in here? No, it's 18. I'm like he overheating. Maybe it's the stress of being live and having to defend my good friend, Fluid Film. So it seems like we're stuck now. There's nowhere I can spray lube and have it be lubed. It just It literally has to pass through here. There's no choice in the matter. So I might end up crushing this one. And the beauty of making your own stuff is that at worst we'll make it again yeah I am fighting the plug 
also checking Discord because my wife is out and about, and this is the first time she'll like go to to public place since she got better. So hopefully she's okay. Natural product cover my duster coat. There we go. Yeah, lanolin is uh, is interesting. I'm not convinced if you go on Amazon and type in lanolin that you'll get the uh, real article because I feel like it's uh, it'd be really prone to um, people, companies pretending they have lanolin because it seems kind of expensive to produce. Ah, oh, come on. Did I get a couple millimeters? This cable, test cable is not going to be the best. So basically, if we get rid of the, if we get rid of the screw, we're probably going to be in better shape. Let's see if I can coax this underneath here. Seems to be like, see him almost flush there. I do seem to be winning a little bit. Maybe dubs. Am I trying to make sparks? So as far as I can see, there's like nothing left on here. I don't know if I like, I wouldn't recommend this brand of silicone. I have some stuff that I bought at the Honda dealership, which is thick as heck. And that stuff is great. This stuff, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't like lamb. I tried lamb before, I didn't like it. However, a, my, a friend of mine owned a um, Jamaican restaurant and he was just taking it over for his uh, father. And so, you know, I knew it was going to be a skinny time in his life, right? When you just first take on a business and then you have to make investments and stuff. So I went there to support him. I had some uh, curry goat and I'll tell you, the goat was amazing. Lamb? Not a fan. Goat? Big fan. If you have a, ever had the chance to try authentic Jamaican curry goat, I would, uh, I would take that. Oh, I don't like mint, so I don't know if I'll, I'll like that. Uh, Oh, no, I think, I think in, in good British terms, I think we may have knackered this one. Let's see if I can get under here, sort of pull it back. Oh, no, broke off a piece of it. Oh, did I grab the cage by accident? I don't know. Buggered. Buggered. I think buggered, I, f I feel like it's almost, that's more uh, Australian. Ow. Booger. Definitely British. 
I don't know. It's hard to 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 nail British terms because there's so many of them. There's so many different like British lexicons. I was born there, raised by British parents. There we go. Yeah, well, I also found out what buggery meant. I'd, I've never heard it in that term, so <laughs> it's a bit weird. Come on. Oh, so I think this is what happened now is that the, the silicone has dried. But look, we're more than flush now. I mean, if it breaks, it breaks. So I guess I just keep going. Get in there. So many terms come and go, yeah. You know who I would watch struggle with this for hours? Julian Eilert. How'd you guys like the uh, fact that I got Julian on the podcast? I mean, I was thrilled. So, I mean, you can tell. I'm a big fan of his. <sighs> but how did you guys like the episode? still listening to the podcast he's a great he's a great conversationalist I'll, i will say that he's a natural i think he was a little concerned but i mean you you just you get him started and he just he takes over he is uh he's great at what he does there's a reason why he's a great youtuber indian and mexican food and families had parties at work and offered you food tables and chairs for them and make sure the trash doesn't overflow okay so this is not going well I think the screw is here so let's see if I can find like a, a needle or something to ease the wire over oh my god my back I'm, I'm so old guys oh look more connectors. Um, where are my back probes? You know, I have so many things here. I have like literally a little bit of everything but I never seem to have what I'm looking for. Um, just you wait until the tax man sees all the stuff that I'm gonna be claiming too. are I uh, my uh, collection of connector and connector type devices has just grown to unmanageable proportions so I need to take everything out and then sort them into subcategories instead of just the main categories um, geez. Some tools. Oh, 
Oh, no. I have a, uh-oh. I had a panic moment where I put a bunch of stuff away in a bin to get out of the way. And that might be where it is. Uh, I don't know if anything in here. Uh, poached trout last night. Uh, Sub to Julian when he started the vocoder. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I'm so sorry about the vocoder project being dead. But, and on the other hand, I'm glad, I'm glad you got to hear it from, from the podcast. That he's officially, he's gone as far as he's going to go with it. And that's it. We just, we just need to move on. He has no space. But yeah, I, I am. I, I hope you know that I was talking about you, um, Franco, when I said I have a viewer that would uh, not be happy if I didn't ask you about the vocoder. <laughs> Where are my needles? What am I working on? I am building some, I'm very unsuccessfully, mind you, uh, building some test leads for, um, because I need to do those Unity videos. And therefore, I'm going to have to uh, put all my test gear up here. And so I need long, reliable test wires to bring the voltage down here. Um, I still want these guys because they, they show on camera. <sighs> That's good. That's good. You saw yourself in that. Uh, so yeah, I like these guys because they show up on camera. They, they point up. But... Uh, some things, I get criticized a lot in the comments that I use uh, switch mode power supplies to test certain things. And some people don't understand that it's the same uh, in some cases. I know not in all cases, but in some cases it's literally the same. They're not sensitive. Um, however, now I'll have a nice, I, I have a nice linear power supply. So I'm going to use it. Okay, so this isn't working. My goal of finding a little my needles. So let me see if I could do something better. Um, I am so disorganized. All right, let's get this in here. That's the screw there. Let's go on the other side. I'm trying to do this without stabbing myself. So I think the screw is like right there. Professional leads from that one company. Um, I bought professional leads for my um, fluke tests. So I have like test leads, uh, like these, these things. Uh, where'd they go? These guys? This is the uh, Made in America um, Probe Master probes, but they're probes. So I'm going to use those for multimeters, but I need something for, uh, yeah. Picked up a 3 amp, 5 volt linear supply of the type that audio fools use. <laughs> I get deployed to revert, replace the switching converter we're powering a low noise amplifiers with to drop the noise. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, audio file stuff uh, mostly is crap, but if you do have something that's testable with low noise, that is a positive thing. Uh, 
So I'm starting to get a headache. I don't know if that's too much caffeine or not enough caffeine. Don't know. I think this took too long. I think that what happened is this took way too long. And now all of the uh, silicone is dry in there. Oh, I definitely screwed up the barrel plug. Oh. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's assess the damage, shall we? Switching noise becomes apparent. There we go. That's when a, uh, a, a joke becomes a dad joke. When the punchline becomes apparent. Okay, so we're, we're going to restart on this one altogether. We have a couple extras, so I'm not too, not too concerned about it, but this can go in the trash. I mean, it's all absolutely knackered in there. Okay, we're going to snip this off. There we go. So this time we're not going to use the screw. You can probably even pass this over as long as like this is filled with that silly cone. Oh, come on. Well, now I got the strands all full of silicone. It's like too thick. No, that's not working. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna solder, and then. We're going to deal with it. So far, we haven't even finished a single test lead. Uh, that's a good idea, Franco. The reason I'm not going to do it is because I really don't want to search for the right size drill bit. So I'm just going to wing it. Come on. RCA to RCA using some not bad coax cable that I then oversheath with extra copper and a bright orange nylon sleeve. I do like making custom cables. I haven't made any RF stuff though. That's about straight. That is like blazing hot right now. The bass notes exhibited certain presence that I don't find with other, other audiophile cables. Yeah. Except then you put it in a uh, spectrum analyzer and it's exactly the same. Ooh, that's hot. Whoop. <laughs> 
get it in there. And I don't have anything against audio files, but just I don't think it it just it it doesn't make a difference for a lot of stuff. But there is some stuff that does make a difference. Right? Like sometimes some some stuff does make a difference. Let's be honest. But when you're fooling yourself on the stuff that doesn't, it undermines the stuff that does. So that slides on there a lot better now. Just need to rotate it into orientation. There we go. Finally, after all those hours, we have one lead of 12 gauge wire. So this should be able to, to, to draw a lot of freaking current through it. So 12 gauge should be more than enough. I just want as little voltage drop as possible through the, uh, through the wires. Yeah, shitty amplifiers, um, uh, noisy power supplies, stuff like that. I get you. All right, let's do another black one. Shitty speakers, bad enclosures, wrong placement in the room, um, bad floor treatment, wall treatments. You really want your uh, your your base to be able to transmit through the floor and through the walls to ideally a corner. <laughs> to be fair though, um, when you pay a little bit more for speakers, you get a lot more. But when you pay a lot more for speakers, you only get a little more compared to the uh, other ones. It's that weird gully, right? You pay you pay a couple hundred bucks for X quality, but for 5% more quality, you need to pay like 5,000% more. It's one of those things. Piss poor crossover design, yeah, absolutely. Welcome to the stream, D Wood. As you can see, I have D wood right here too. There we go, that's one. This should start going a little bit faster now, now that we've got the hang of it. There we go. I, uh, I wish I was outside right now, to be honest, because I'm not actively working on, like, the six major things that I need to be working on, which is fine. But what I'd really like to do is cut down the tree that's been worrying me, but it's, like, really shit weather out there. I want too much base when you have the neighbors on three sides. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a town home, row home or whatever you call it. So I understand we do share a wall. When they slam a door, when the neighbors slam a door, you hear it. However, like my wife and I, we don't even use doors. Like, what do you need a door for? So they don't hear us slam doors we don't use doors. We took off. There's like three doors that we've removed from our house already. There was a door to the uh, workshop, the basement down here. Took that off because it was always open. So what's the point? What's the point of having a door there? Oh, I only did one half of that. Oh, whatever. Do the other half now. 
your glasses cabinet rattles. Need some insulation, some foam insulation there to isolate the uh, the glass cabinet from uh, the, from the rest of the house. There we go. Yeah, nobody commented on my title. It's the anxiety stream because I got so much stuff to do and decided to just hang out with you guys instead. Depends on whether you have an open door policy or not. Yeah, open door policy here, except for guests. If guests want uh, privacy, then they can shut the door to wherever they're staying or to the bathroom, but for us, what's the difference? It's just us two. We have no kids. We have no pets. We have nothing but each other. And uh, to be clear, we are never having kids. We are both on the exact same page on that one. That's all you need. Anything else complicates things, yeah. Got a lot to do, and I'm doing that and listening to Sunday streams. Who else is streaming, by the way? Uh, by the way, I totally understand if you guys want to go over to uh, to another streamer. Uh, you know what I've been enjoying lately is uh, Unexpected Maker, Sion. He's been building a robot arm, which I'm jealous of. Is Clive streaming today? Pour a little bit more solder. At some point, my fancy reel of solder is going to run out, and I'm going to be sad. Three kids, don't regret having them much. If I was still young, I would not do it again. Yeah. Yeah, like, you're not going to... Like, obviously, when you watch your kids grow and become their own adults and stuff like that, obviously, there's sentiments there, right? I'm not... I mean, I'm not a monster. I understand how people get attached to their kids. All I'm saying is it's, it's not for me. And there's enough, there's enough turmoil in my life and in the world that I, I don't think I could handle having kids. Like, I don't, I, I have so many responsibilities. You know, like I work three jobs just to keep the lights on. Uh, one of which is YouTube, so it's a bit different. But it's still a job, like I still have to make content. And uh, the last thing I need is another mouth to feed and someone else needing my attention. Uh, modding on Mr. Brown's channel, just over an hour. There are over 200 mods on there. Wow, that's hilarious. blow away at Guinness zero percent interesting I'm not a big fan of the flavor of beer to be honest I don't drink beer I'll tell you too I have not had alcohol in a very long time probably the last time was on stream with you guys so that's well over a year ago probably over two years ago Just, I'm just not interested. Uh, 
you know, I've, I've got so much to do all the time that I just can't, I can't just be wasted. Dr. Left Hand Thread is on at 4 p.m. Irish Power Tool Repair Guy in Ireland. That's pretty neat. Making mods to one of our bits of electronics, but laziness, yeah. I mean, it's good to take some time off. That's why I'm taking this time. Haven't touched booze in four years. Did you not have a have a beer when we when we met up at the observatory? I thought you did, but I a lot was happening that day, so don't see the point in non-alcoholic beer. Might as well have a juice. Yeah, if but some people like the taste of beer though. That's like I have caffeine free. Um, I have caffeine free uh, coffee. Okay, you didn't. Like I said, a lot was going on that day, especially like, you remember how, I won't name any names, but how someone was like really, really late. <laughs> I don't want to put anybody on blast. So I was like, what the hell is going on? And I didn't know you, uh, Marcus, except through this person. So I was like, I don't know, where do I go back here? This looks like a freaking government installation. go there so these are all done I just need to let them cool it's quite cool uh, and so we can make more too because um, this is just the high current stuff. Um, might be useful to make some more, but I think this is going to be really useful. Uh, I seem to be missing a black sheath. No, here it is. But yeah, I met Marcus over at the observatory, and I met uh, Gabe at the same time. The... Uh, YouTuber from, uh, oh my god, uh, holy crap, what is Gabe's channel? <laughs> so, somebody help me, <laughs> save it for parts, jeez, I said, I told you my brain was wrecked, so that's not my fault. Still struggling with COPD. That's what it will kill her. Oh, well, hey, Curtis. That's uh, I'm not gonna dox Curtis, but he's uh, he's a Canadian as well. That was uh, probably a funky noise. I don't know if you guys can clip my videos as well. Huh? I don't know if you uh, know how to do that. But if I do something funny, you can clip it. Oh. Yeah, I'm, uh, my brain has been mush uh, I'm guessing I'm in some serious stages of burnout at the moment, but there's no rest for the wicked, so. So, since I am wicked, I cannot rest. Those of you uh, just joining me, I'm doing these backwards because uh, these wires need to, the insulation is too thick for these, uh, these things 
these sheaths to go on before you solder. Oh, jeez. Maybe I should double silicone. Maybe I should silicone the inside as well. It's not too late on this one. So silicone like that, and then silicone in here. You fall into a depressive slump if you're not doing something interesting. I wish I had some time to do nothing. So we got a few Canadians in here. So Marcus is Canadian. Um, oh, what's his name? Stevens. Jesus. Peter Stevens is Canadian. Curtis Ireland is Canadian. even though his name is Ireland, literally Ireland. <clears throat> He's not Irish. He may, may have Irish roots, though. A lot of Canadians have Irish roots. Oh, my God. Okay, the red ones are far less pliable, I am learning. I may have to go outside and get my my big boy silicone. It's going to make much more of a mess, though. But I think the red stuff is not as... No Irish roots. Okay, just the name, then. Curtis, are you going to the Open Source Hardware Summit in Montreal next month? I was supposed to go, but I think I have too much on my plate. Maybe next year I can go as a speaker. Oh, jeez. Oh, come on. Get in there. Picked up a couple of cheap current transformers a couple weeks back. They had 3.5 millimeter audio connectors. Uh, turns out a bit of cleverness. You can sample them with an audio dongle. Interesting. Definitely keeping busy. Yeah, that's good. In this freaking economy... Okay, I just knocked all of my little screws everywhere. <laughs> Whoopsies. In this economy, you kind of got to keep busy. Can't stop. I had a conversation with my, uh, with my new boss there, the new mechanic boss. And I explained to him calmly that I'm just going to die at work. I am uh, I'm not going to retire. There's no way. There we go. Two ends done. So that's two. Two out of four. Oh. My uh, wire holder might not be strong enough. Oh. Um. Turn into another one of my stupid new radio tricks. We'll use them for measuring motor current in real time. Nice. I had a friend who died at work. It was awful. No, I, I don't mean literally dying at work. Um, I didn't mean to be that bleak. I mean, like, I'm going to work until I can't work anymore, and then by that time, I'm probably going to be pretty much expired. Uh, I haven't finished the black one. No, I, no, I did finish the black one. I have two, two completed wires, red and black. Had a family history done. Haven't read it yet. I am uh, 
not sending my DNA to uh, one of those DNA places like uh, 21 and Me or something like that, 20 whatever. Um, definitely not doing that. No, it's all good, Franco. All right, we're going to try this sauce. See if that's any better. It's a little bit thicker. It has PTFE. Just going to put a little bit in there. Work it all the way around. Whoop. Just a dab will do you. Twenty-three and me, yeah. Okay, twenty-three chromosomes. There we go. There was a time that I knew this. Oh. I think I've been uh, shoving stuff out of my brain so I can learn about my new Volvo. Also, whenever I say Volvo, it sounds like I'm about to say Volvo. <laughs> for for no no apparent reason. It's just that's where my brain goes. Maybe because I'm a YouTuber and I'm like really sensitive to how words are going to come out. That is one of the triumphs of science, huh? Mapping the human genome. That was a, like a massive international effort. Oh, well that one went pretty well. have to wipe the goop off of, off of it now. Back in the 80s, we made a fake Volvo tag that actually said Volvo. There we go. I, I hope this car is going to bring me some peace. Yeah, debt 100% Franco. They, well, they all sell it. They all sell the data because they don't. They can't possibly make enough money with the price of the kit to to keep the lights on. So yeah, they all sell the data. They'll tell you they don't sell it, but what they don't sell is like your individual data. They will sell um, like aggregated data, uh, but there are some things you can put together to make an idea. 3D printer, little electric plating, and you too can have your own... Yes, you can. Uh, but in fact, it's even easier than that. All you need to, uh, to do is uh, to get a CAD model and then go on PCB way, and then you can literally have a badge made out of aluminum or stainless steel or whatever you want. Pretty cool. And in fact, I wouldn't even go electroplating if you're just going for the, the looks, because now the spray chromes, like the, 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 false, the false chromes that you spray paint on, have gotten so good. I've watched uh, Adam Savage apply some. It looks incredible. At some point, I would, uh, I would love to meet Adam Savage now that his name came up. <laughs> and I think the way to do that is to attend Open Sauce next year. Uh, however, somehow, like, I'd have to get to San Francisco in the summer. And... Typically, I work in the summers. This year, I don't work in the summers because my program was canceled. However, that means I can't afford to go to San Francisco. <laughs> I wonder what the flights are costing. Let's see. Oh, my mom just texted me, said that my dad watched my, my Unity video. 
Let's see. Uh, it looks like looks like it's about eight hundred bucks to fly to San Fran and back. That is expensive. Has changed. Uh, okay. Uh, your fantasy is to have Adam, Zyla Foxland, Simone Yatch to the observatory to do stuff that make an insanely cool video. Um, sadly, Adam Savage, I don't think there's enough there's enough to do at the observatory for him to go. Uh, I've also been told that Zyla Foxland is like one of the busiest people in the industry and that's by a very reliable source a source that knows her um so i don't know simone i'm not sure simone is doing fewer youtube things but she must be doing other stuff i know she has a product business But yes, that would be, that would be awesome. I, d I know who would come out, uh, Marcus. I know someone who would. Yeah, Zyla is a, po a pilot, so she could fly in. <laughs> but she's not a commercial pl pilot. Like, she just does her own flights. Um, if you reach out to... Uh, Oh, geez, what's his name? Luke Lafreniere. If you reach out to him uh, from Linus Tech Tips, he uh, is the CTO at the moment of Floatplane, which is their video hosting platform. He's also co-host of The WAN Show. If you reach out to him, uh, anything that has to do with space, he's in. You got a postcard? Oh, that's really freaking cool. What's the context there? Did you reach out? That is really cool. Uh, Zyla is like freaking awesome. Oh, this one is bent Oh, that's really awesome. Oh, that's really cool. I am uh I'm so glad that you um, that you got a, a postcard from her. That's awesome. I don't have stickers. I do remember that video. But anyway, the the CCERA is way like objectively cooler than the shit I do that like you guys have a serious installation there oh I seem to have already lubed this one yeah I I think that's awesome that's freaking amazing Did you invite her out to the uh, observatory? I promise if, uh, if, if she goes to the observatory, I would not crash your, <laughs> crash your, your visit. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't impose my will on your visit for sure. I'd be really happy for you guys, though. So I would invite Zyla out to take a look um, because she may have friends in um, Toronto, Ottawa, or Montreal, and she may use it as an excuse to get a whole bunch of things she's invited to done and fly sort of across the country in small legs. You know what I mean? 
So if if you want her there, which I mean, why wouldn't you? Because she makes freaking awesome stuff. Um, I would see her uh, have more chances coming down. I am a hundred percent like, man, a maker like her. I am sure. Uh, email you the name of the space guy. Oh yeah, Luc Lafreniere. Uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll 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 hit I'll hit you up. Anything space related, he he said he's so down. And so again, he's the type I don't think he'll he would go. Uh he would come all he's from uh British Columbia. So I don't think he would come here specifically only for the observatory. However, um like there's tons of stuff to do in Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, right? And the same reason I think Zyla Foxlin might come up because I'm sure she knows people. Um, here, this this one's done now. I'm sure she knows people in the area that she would love to meet up with, and so if she's planning a cross Canada thing already, or a cross country thing already, I'm like I wouldn't pass up. Like I didn't pass up the chance to go see the observatory, and I don't think she would either. Um, but yeah, Luke Luke Lafreniere is. Uh, he works uh, mobile. You spoke with Luke? That's awesome. No, Franco, I don't think so. Uh, I don't... So the reason I don't think so is because um, there is a big difference between a hey, wink, wink, come uh, come and, and visit me and you can stay at my place and we can go to dinner together and whatever. There's a difference between that and reaching out on behalf of the CCERA uh, saying that, you know, we would love to have you down, show you the, 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 the observatory and, and stuff like that, maybe collab on a video or whatever. Um, there's a big difference. The, women from a young age, they can tell the difference. 100%. The only thing that I would say makes it very difficult, which which I found, is that uh, women creators tend to not look at their DMs in, on any platform because it's just filled with the absolute, like, most desperate guys you have ever seen. Like, my wife's comment section is just, it's like filled with it. And you can, you can tell you can 100% tell the difference, uh, those who are creepy and those who are not. Your Firefox <laughs> gave up the ghost. But yeah, I think, I, I think especially someone on the West Coast, I don't, I, I don't think they would come down just for the observatory uh, because it is expensive to travel across Canada or across the States. But 100% sure if they are planning a trip here, they would 100% love to stop at the observatory. And why wouldn't you? Right? Like you'd, you'd have to be an idiot to say no to that. All right, should we make... So now I've got eight wires. I think eight probably is okay for now. But I do have more of these. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll, I, my wife shows me the comments, right? The ones that are clearly inappropriate. And it's really like, it's so obvious. And they're just like, they're like, oh, I love the lovely comments you made on this movie. Also, I love your hair extensions. It seems very attractive. And it's like, <laughs> you're being, it's like, wow, dude. Like, I, I mean, you're shooting your shot. Good for you. But uh, that is like the, a weird way to introduce yourself. I also fully, I would... Honestly, I would not. I I would not trade being a man on the internet for being a woman on the internet. No way in hell. No chance. 
she definitely gets treated a lot worse being a woman on the internet. It's one, it's like 100% clear. Um, let's see if we have smaller wire. So we have some, what, what gauge is this? Oh, it's triple core. Whoops, that's not thick gauge at all. So I have 12 gauge in here also. I have ribbon cable. I don't have too much, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, mains cable, yeah, for sure. Uh, what's the triple threat? So she's young. Uh, she used to model. I mean, maybe she still does, I don't really know. And she's doing, like, uh, traditional male stuff. Is that, is that the three? I mean, I'm also, I also watch what I say because I, I try to go over what I'm about to say a couple times to see if it can be interpreted poorly. Young, cute, very clever, motivated and productive. Yeah, she's, she's a boss lady, man. What, what can I say? She's a, I am so glad for her success. And especially like her, she built up relationships with like a total boat and stuff, which is awesome because it brings us more of these kinds of videos. She's got some good shit going on. I, I really like, uh, is she an engineer? I don't know if she's a formal engineer. She has, I think she has post-secondary. I don't know in what. I wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, bottle tote, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if she was an engineer, but I don't remember her saying it explicitly. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, she must be an engineer. That's true, because she did that uh, project with the hug, the hug bear or whatever in university. So, yeah, for sure. If I could go back... Uh, to school and be an engineer, like if I if that was on the table for me, I would totally do it. Um, math and I do not get along, and so it's not going to happen. But it would be pretty good. A uh, couple things to look at. I have uh, negative rail power supplies now, by the way, guys, uh, or dual rail power supplies. Uh, if I can find them all. Yeah, so for sure, for sure she's, she has an engineering degree, or um, at least a STEM degree. Uh, I don't know, like, her actual thing, but it, like I said, like, it, it, even, even not knowing, it wouldn't have surprised me at all. She's pretty, uh, she's a pretty bright spark, I'll tell you that. I don't even know how this works. Uh, so this is a 10 volt. Uh, I think the control systems aspect of the observatory might appeal with respect to her mech eng. I mean, she, I don't, so the thing is, Marcus, I don't think you'll have to convince her very hard to visit the uh, observatory, like any aspect of the observatory, the whole thing. I, I mean, you have to remember, you're kind of used to it by now. I, I think that the whole thing is like, interesting as hell. But the issue is getting someone to cross the country. I mean, if, if she has like a video idea, it should probably, I mean, it'll probably be even more settled because 
then she can, you know, business expense it. But yeah, I don't think it'll take much convincing. What's this? Here's another dual power, a uh, dual uh, rail. Yeah, this is a high power one. So this is what I'm planning a video on at some point too. Is these, uh, so this is a, a big boost. A, a big, a DC DC big boost converter. So that'll be an adjustable one. So I got these to play with uh, with uh, op amps. You like her teardrop trailer, the one that was stolen and then she had to recover it. And it got like trashed in, in that very little amount of time. Yeah, it got stolen. She has a video on it where so someone stole it and then she had to, she recovered it uh, not too far from where it was stolen. Yeah. Yeah, so she still has it, but yeah, she does have a video where she, where she talks about it. I don't remember in what video. People suck, huh? Oh, here's a, oh, these are two different ones. Okay, this is a 10 volt, this is a 5 volt split rail. And then, yeah, that one's adjustable. I'm telling you, I am actually a Xyla fan. I don't, I, uh, I, I love it when I get people onto the podcast and then I ask them questions and they're like, wow, good question. Like I catch them by surprise that I'm actually a fan, right? Like I was asking Julian questions. I was like, man, didn't this happen like back then or something? And then he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, I'm just having a stretch. You know what? I think I'm going to put a coffee in the microwave. I'm getting a little uh, hoarse. My voice is getting a little hoarse. Um, but you guys will follow me up there. The microphone. Plus, we can be loud in the entire house because it is... Uh, my wife is away. I don't think she sent me a Discord message to tell me when she's coming back. Um, da, 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 da. Da, 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 no, no updates. It's four thirty. It's like miserable outside. It is rain, and it is kind of cold. I think it's uh, seven degrees Celsius, something like that. Let me just check. It is eight degrees Celsius. All right, well, that's gonna take another two minutes. Uh, I guess I can bring this downstairs. Oh boy, guys. So I'm not looking forward to fixing up that Volvo, but I am looking forward to getting a um, car again. What are we doing now? I'm not sure. I'm contemplating uh, messing with these um, split rail power supplies because I do need to eventually make a video on them because I will use them for 
a PCB way video. Yeah, so the I, I booked this is how much of an idiot I am. All right, let me let me lay lay it out for you guys. In Ontario, when you buy a used car, if you get insurance on it, so I've contacted my broker, I got a quote, and then I'm like, can we get it done for Monday? Here's the VIN, and then he didn't answer me, so hopefully he gets it done. Anyways, when you get a used car, you get insurance on it, then you register it to your name, like you need a bill of sale and the ownership signed and whatever. Uh, then you can purchase a trip permit. So that is 10 days that you can drive the car, as long as you have insurance on it. At the end of that 10 days, you can extend it another 10 days, but then that is it. So within those 20 days, you need to go get a vehicle safety check at a approved shop. I used to work at an approved shop. I used to be able to do safety checks, but now, since I only work with a very small, like a, a crew of one, basically it's me and the owner of the company, uh, he's not, his business isn't registered with the ministry. So I need to go get a safety check. So I have booked a safety check for the 20, uh, hang on, April month, for the 25th. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I've, I've booked the safety check for the 25th. So that means I need to get the car in order before the 25th. So I need to get the car here. The plan is on Tuesday to, to go to the, to the ministry, register the car to my name. That's if I got insurance on time. And then bring the car here tear it apart, do all my safety checking, order parts, whatever it needs, on that day, on that Tuesday, get the parts in, install it, fix it all before the 25th. And on top of that, I also booked an appointment uh, on uh, Wednesday for a windshield. It needs a windshield for safety, for sure. So I have essentially only a couple days to order parts in order to get them in on time to fix it on time and if it rains during all that time I'll have to work in the rain because I need to get it done before the safety check on the 25th. The reason it's hard to get a safety check is right now it's finally uh, warmed up for the first time this uh, spring so now people are changing their summer tires over from their winter tires so all the shops are booked solid. I was lucky to get an appointment. So that is my, this is part of my anxiety. With this, why the, the anxiety stream? Because I've got that. I've got the housework, like cleaning and stuff that I haven't done in so long. I've been working like a dog. I've got the outside housework to get done. And I've got um, a couple of people need me to do work on their cars. And these are people without money, so like friends and family. So I got that. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff. Anyways, let me get the coffee because now it should be, the water should be hot. There we go. Be right back, coffee. But yeah, here's, here's hoping it goes smoothly because it could go horribly. I can't even, I can't even locate the type of transmission fluid I need to put into it. I think it's 75W80. Oh shit, I made coffee with caffeine. Oh well, probably won't sleep tonight. Like so, like so. Fancy creamer. go. I 
There we go. Back I come. Uh, oh, uh, uh, yes, the Volvo does run, uh, in fact. It drives like a freaking smooth dream. It's a front-wheel drive, but it is a manual transmission because I'm not doing that mistake again. Since the V50 in that year uh, sports a similar transmission to what my car had, which has those transmission issues. So it runs, but it just needs work. It needs quite a bit of work for it past safety. And that's if the surface rust is not too bad. I took a quick look underneath. I couldn't see anything crazy. But yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know how bad the rust is underneath. I don't have a I didn't have a hoist to look at it. Glad the car runs. Yeah. Me too. I had to do brakes and wheel bearings on my 244GL roughly 18 months. Wow. Yeah, it's a fixer. Yeah, okay. So this V50, yes, is a fixer upper, but it was $1,500. So again, I went through this at the beginning of the stream, but that is... Uh, oh, actually, for those of you that weren't there at the beginning of the stream, I, I'm going to show you something. But basically, the whole car, plus the taxes I have to pay on it, plus the uh, safety check, and all the parts I'm going to have to put into it, will cost me less than replacing my transmission on my old Volvo. So that's why. So that old Volvo probably will end up at the uh, recycler, sadly. I love that thing to death, but unless I can convert it to manual or get the courage to fix it myself, uh, to fix transmission myself, uh, yeah, just want to show people who weren't here earlier this is a result of a Lego date with my wife. So we, I bought her a set that she'll use as a background in her, uh, on her YouTube channel. And this is the set I got for me. And then we did, we built them together. However, um, mine has 2,000 pieces and hers only had 1,300. So she's long done hers. This one's not even done. And here we go. You have an, oh, SD's Saturn V model built 20 years ago, still haven't built. I honestly, Marcus, as someone who likes space like you, I would just go onto AliExpress. Uh, this right now, you can get it for $77 w with free shipping for the Saturn V Lego set. And the kit builds so well. Like it's such a complex but neat build that it, it was, I've gotten more than my money's worth out of building it at the moment. And uh, I'm not even done, but it's incredible. And I was worried that the uh, cheap Chinese Legos weren't going to fit together very nicely, but these are not that. My, um, my nephew, I prefer models that actually fly yeah, I mean, I get it. But there's, a, there's a time and a place, right? So my nephew had some knockoff Legos, and I've messed with those a little bit, and they, they didn't fit together. They were kind of shit. So I knew that I wanted to display this, so I was like, screw it. If they don't fit together very well, I'm just going to super glue them. I, I don't care. However, these fit very well. They fit extremely well, so uh, I have no regrets. And there we go. And I'm, I'm honestly, like, in a couple of years, I might, I might buy a second one just to put together again. Um, but this one here is going to appear in a YouTube video. And if I can do it before next year, um, then I'm going to claim some of this off on my taxes. Because, <laughs> yeah, I want to make a shadow box. But, yeah, this is going really well. This is the, uh, the second stage, so obviously the booster stage is done. This one doesn't have its engines yet or it's uh, cowling on the top. But these hooks, these red hooks on the very top, that's where it's going to hook to the next stage. As you can see the red hooks down there hook onto the gray hooks there. 
So, yeah, very fancy. I uh, I love it. I love the build. Just the quiet contemplation while you like sort the pieces out from the bags and like sorting through 2,000 pieces is pretty, uh, is something special too. Pretty freaking cool. But yeah, I would definitely recommend if you can't afford the three hundred dollars for the for the original kit, I have a sixty percent scale HV R cast that is acting as decorative curtain rod. I don't know what an HV R cast is. I agree. Lego has great tolerances. But for some reason, these Chinese ones, they're almost as good, which is crazy. Because if you buy them at the, you can buy knockoff Legos at the dollar store here, but they don't fit for shit. However, these Legos from AliExpress, they fit really well. Atmospheric sounding rocket, interesting. Uh, people at home, do not Google sounding <laughs> with your safe, safe search off. Anyways, enough of that. Um, shall we? Let's see if we can get these things uh, going. Oh, this is supposed to be adjustable. DC Bic Boost. Um, so, yeah, we need some sort of wire for this. Some sort of wire. Um... So all my test leads, I, uh, they all fell down. Well, they didn't fall, I guess. I moved them because I needed to uh, reposition them. These guys should work. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it, Franco. It isn't worth it. Um, so let's use, let's turn this one on, let's turn this one off. We'll use 5 volts, oh, V set 5, enter. Current set, we're going to go half an amp, enter. <laughs> Have you been terrorized? I did, I did tell you not to. But you're a grown man, you know, you took, you, you took my advice and you decided not to follow it, which is fine. But now you gotta live with it. So I'm a tradesperson, right? Don't forget. Um, I find out all sorts of things I don't want to find out about. <laughs> Cystoscopy. I'm not going to look that up. Ooh, look at my bare arms. I have no tan. Look, I've had no sun. Okay, so no guarantees that these are not just going to blow up. Having issues clamping this in here. They should have a hole, right? Pasty and white as God intended. Uh huh.
really need to make myself a like universal connector for my power supplies. There we go. I mean, cystoscopy. I think the root word is cyst. Okay, so here, I'll get let you guys see the screen. Okay, we're going to go get a, a multimeter. Nice big one, we can see. <clears throat> they sent a camera into your bladder. I would request they go the long way. <laughs> That's what, that would be my request. Is it possible to go the scenic route? Okay, so I just turned this on. It is drawing uh, 0.02, like 20 milliamps. So let's put the, the ground should be in the middle here. What do we have here? 20 volts, positive. 20 volts, negative. Look at that. So it works. It's the unpleasant stinging sensation that says, I love you. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> this is a bust, bust, buck boost. So counterclockwise brings up the positive voltage. Go to like plus minus 10 or something. There you go. Okay, now let's check the negative voltage. Oh, plus 10, it's draining. Okay, it needs a load. It needs a little bit of a load. Let's, uh, let's get a resistor. Let's give it a couple milliamps here. Let's do a 1K. Oh, I got a Discord message. Let's see. Okay. My wife says she's still alive. That's uh, good to know. Okay. So let's load down. Very minimally load down. I don't really know what the output current should be on this. See if we can stuff those like that. There we go. Fold that over. Fold that over. Yeah, don't I don't really talk about it on the internet because I don't really want to seem like I'm a controlling person, but my wife goes and uh, does work, and since since she works for herself, like it's all different stuff all the time. So I don't really mind that she goes for as long as she wants. I don't really care. Plus, she has fun. But it is nice to see a sign of life every couple hours, you know. So I don't worry. Okay, let's try this. 10 volts, 10 volts on the negative. So there we go. 
And now, I mean, this should only be milliamps, right? Hopefully it's not. It's using uh, half a watt, but it should only be driving one milliamp on each side. Hang on, let's get the thermal camera. Also, I don't know where the, where my macro lens went. I probably shoved it back in the box. Oh. Huh, where did I put my macro lens? Uh, hmm. I mean, it's a big gray thing, can't really be missed. Where is the macro lens? Macro lens. Oh, I actually bought some other stuff too. I don't know if I showed this off, but I got one of these 80 by 50 um, machinist square. And I got a, another one of these, and I don't remember what size it is because I can't find it now. Put these all over the place. True, I might not need it. I did start up the. Uh, here we go. Okay, so the top of these caps don't show me anything. So it's the inductors that are warm. Oh, and the resistors. The resistors are 58 degrees. Okay, but at 10 volts, divide that by 1,000. No, it's 10 milliamps each. Okay. So that makes a little bit more sense. No, it can't be 10 milliamps. Because we're only drawing... Oh, we're drawing 90 milliamps. Yeah, okay. So I think it's 10 milliamps at 10 volts. So yeah, they're at 60C. Yeah, I do want the macro lens. I don't know where it went, though. Hmm. I did warn you guys my brain was fried, right? If not, I'm doing it again. Warning, my brain is fried. Speaking of fried, fried chicken would be awesome right now. I'm so hungry. But I'm probably gonna have some sort of crappy peanut butter and jam sandwich. Trying not to spend too much on it before my taxes are paid. Because God knows it's going to be multiple thousands of dollars for sure. Uh, trout. Tonight you're utterly uninspired. Yeah, I feel you. And yes, I agree, B-dubs. Uh, thermal cameras are ridiculously expensive. I understand, oh, here it is. I understand that there's lots of technology. So I get why they're expensive, but I mean, eventually they will come down. There we go. It clips really nicely there. And then, yeah, you get right up in there. So yeah, this inductor is much warmer than the others. And you get these really nice hot components, but the chip is cool. My hands must be really cold because that 60 degrees C does not feel very warm to me. Look at that. Look at that nice close up. 
here. That's a really nice thermal image. Get the photo. Uh, managed to get one that looks like this one, but it's a no-name brand. Yeah, the only thing is, it's definitely not this one. Uh, this one, this one is huge. Um, and also, e Unity told me they don't advocate clubbing anyone with them. Oopsies. <laughs> Let's see, is this warm? So the screen is warm. Yeah, not really. Okay, so that works. So if we crank the voltage up, the resistors will get hotter. So let's crank the voltage down. Let's see if we could go down to like, I don't know, 3.3 volts. All right, Marcus, have a good one. Thank you for being here. It's actually been uh, quite a few quite a few hours, so I'm going to be calling it quits pretty soon to eat. I just wanted to really hang out with you guys and say hello. Make sure you guys didn't think I was dead. Three point three volts positive. 3.3, 3.3. It's pretty close to the same. Now, I should be able to see these resistors cooling down. Yeah, they're already down to like 30. Okay. So, yeah, that works. Let's, uh, let's push it a little bit. We might get some smoke out of the, uh, out of the resistors, but let's see how high we can go here. Oops. Uh, flip these. So let's see if we can make it up to like, I don't know, 15, 20 volts. Okay, we're burning a watt now. I feel the, the, the heat coming off the resistors. 70, 75, 80, 80 degrees, 82. We're getting hot. We have a, a watt going through here. The inductors are like 32. These uh, resistors are going to start smoking soon. 95, 97. They're getting hot. They're going to start changing color soon, too. Check the back of the board. I do see heat. I'm gonna see if I can not have the background spoil it there. It's definitely hotter over there. How hot are those resistors now? 101, kind of stabilizing there. I'm not gonna touch them, that's like boiling. Let's see if we can push it all the way up to uh, 20 volts. I'm going to bend these resistors up a bit so they don't burn my desk when they get hot. Okay, 15. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty point two two. They're going to be getting hot now for sure. What do we got? One hundred and forty. The inductors. Inductors are getting hot. Let's 
The chip is still cool though. 28, despite being like right next to those inductors. 160 degrees C. Actually, the resistors are holding up pretty good. I wouldn't touch them though. Yeah, you can see the board is getting warm. Pretty cool, you can see the traces. You can definitely feel the heat coming off of them. Yeah, I mean, it's not putting out a lot of power, but it's putting out some. I'm surprised that little diode is not hot. This one here. Yeah, that's coming from a 5 volt input. So if we go V set, let's say 20 volts. Let's see what gets hot in here now. So those resistors are still hot. Same temperature, 165C. Something smells like burning, but now I know it's just the resistors. So that's still fine. Let's see if we can make it. Oh, I don't know what the input voltage is. It says 50 volts on that cap. And 63 on that one. I really don't know what the input is, though. Let's go. V set 30. Please don't blow up. Oh, the inductor is getting hot now. Okay, we're going to put it back down to 5. I'm afraid of a cap blowing up, <laughs> basically. Cool. And our resistor is still 162 degrees Celsius. Definitely creating a little bit of heat there. Very cool. Nobody. There's no smoke being let out. None at all. So yeah, I got these, uh, these four modules are here for basically for the same thing. It's for these boards, which were made by Unibyte from PCBWay. And that's to play with some op amps pretty uh, hyped about that. Since you need positive voltage and negative voltage. Oh yeah, I'm a big chicken. I mean, I told Mehdi, I told him directly, <laughs> I'm a big chicken. And you guys know this. Um, some of you were there when I uh, made a, um, a little Tesla coil kit that someone sent me to my mailbox. No, this is um, Unibytes, but he based his off uh, I'm Psy. So th this is, it is a, a Unibyte original creation, but he based his upon I'm Psy's design. I don't know what any of this means, so I'm going to have to take a look at everything. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of op amps as well. I, I don't know what they all are. Um, let's see. I've got... I should probably put them all in one spot instead of scattered across the universe here. Uh, I got... TL082CP. Don't know what that means. What are these? Oh, these are new triple five timers because uh, you had put that in my form, um, Franco. So I have new triple five timers. Um, oh, here. 
and here's an assortment. Uh, TL062 CP. TL082 CP. These won't fit in there. TL064 CN. TL072 CP. Uh, TL074 CN. TL082 CP. And TL084 CN. So these are all types of uh, op amps we're going to use. Yeah, all Chineseum. And these are all going to be powered by these boards. And we're going to put, we're going to feed in a uh, signal from a function gen. I mean, I've got I've got new function gens, and we're going to scope them out on the oscilloscope. We're going to scope the input and the output. There should be enough little jumpers in here to get everything working. If not, I'll figure it out. So that should be pretty freaking neat. And what's nice is we're going to set it all up, and then we're going to be able to yank out one op amp and put in another op amp and see what, what we get different. I'm actually really hyped on this. Uh, I have, I do not understand op amps at all. It's beyond my capability. So I'm really happy that I'm going to get the chance to... Uh, to take a look. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for me. I need to eat something and um, probably just going to have to sit with my anxiety for the rest of the evening. I'll try to do something productive, like maybe I'll do some uh, sorting for my taxes or something because it's going to get to the point now where it's going to be too late to do stuff pretty soon. So I want to thank you guys, everyone, for being here. I don't know how many viewers we ended up getting in the end. Peak of eight, it seems. Seems like a lot of you are watching after also, which is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly, Peter. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So yeah, have a good day, everyone. Um, I'm still live. Hi. Um, th throughout this month, there might be a live stream here and there, but no, no guarantees. Hopefully starting next month, um, the plan will be to live stream a little bit more because we need to make more videos. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for being here.